All right, Glenn, I think we're actually live now. I hit the record button. Uh, I am totally honored, excited. I've been waiting for this for a while to have you live in our group. You've seen the outrage, the excitement in the group of having you here. Everybody is in awe of you, the collection that you have. So first of all, welcome and thank you for doing this with us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the uh, the opportunity. I yeah. really do. Yeah. A great group. I'll tell you what I joined and I've been blown away. What a great uh, down to earth uh, group that you have. So thank, thank you. Thank, thank you for you. inviting me. And I want to thank you for the care package that you sent in the mail personally as well. That was yes, incredible. So. And you did as well. <laughs> uh. Well, Glenn, obviously we want to jump in and we want yeah. to understand you a little bit more <clears throat> and the collection that you have. Um, if you can, before we get into it, and I know you're going to take us around and show us a yeah. few things, but if you can just share a little bit of a history behind it all. How it got started, I know that you were born in Green Bay, Wisconsin. You're right. now in Texas, but give us a little bit of history behind all this, if you don't mind. Yeah. Well, um, in 1984, I moved from uh, Menominee Falls to, um, to Texas for a job opportunity. And uh, so I traveled back and forth to Wisconsin to see my family and so forth, and when I went back, my mom uh, gave me or asked me, hey, Glenn, you're, you're a Packer fan. Um, would you like all my stuff from when I was with the Packers? And uh, I said, wow, yeah, I, I definitely would. And so she gave me all of her batons and her programs and her, and her field passes and letters from the Packers uh, from the 19... Or early 1940s, 1940 to 45 is when my mom was in there. Um, Curly Lambeau came to Green Bay East High School, saw her twirling at the halftime of the high school football game, and he said, wow, I want that girl to join the gruff uh, Green Bay Packer lumberjack band. He wanted to bring a, a, a woman's touch to the uh, sideline. So she was the first baton majorette with the Packer lumberjack band. And um, so she, she was out there with the likes of Don Hudson, Curly Lambeau, and, and, and so forth. Um, so, you know, when I got those items, I took them back to uh, Texas here, and I was like, well, now what am I going to do? And I've got to display them somehow. Um, so I started, I, I put them up on my wall in my office, my home office. And um, so I said, well, shoot, you know, up in the attic, I have my old football helmet. I got my electric football set from when I was a kid. I've got a few things, a bobblehead, um, you know, stickers, whatever. And so little by little, I dra dragged it all out, started displaying it. And um, that's how it started. So that was in 1994 is when my, my collection actually started. Okay. Now, at that time, yeah. in 1994... How big was your collection then? You said your mom gave you a bunch. Did you have any idea of the impact that it would get to today? None. You know, when, when I started, Jim, uh, I had my mom's stuff, the few things that I have uh, that I had in the attic. And then I added, you know, a Bart Starr throwback jersey, a Nitschke, and, a, and I think a Taylor maybe and uh, had them signed. I sent them to wherever to have them signed. And uh, so that was my collection. And that's, it's grown from that point in 1994 to, to what it is today, where I'm actually um, trying to talk my wife into get another room in my house to, uh, to expand it. So, wow. uh, yeah, I had no idea it would keep going. You know, the whole, the whole thing, you're, you're an outer stater as well. You know, I can't just, uh, I'm 1,100 miles from Lambeau Field and 1,100 miles from Green Bay. And, you know, I just love those days of being there and I miss it so much. And when I come up to my room, I feel like I'm back in Green Bay, you know. Uh, yeah. So, uh, it, and it's been welcome. You know, our whole, 
all of our relatives moved from Wisconsin down here. We have over 90 people here now. And uh, so, you know, they just all love coming here and seeing the pack of room. And of course, I'm always showing it off to, to somebody. So, right. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, as you, I know you're going to take us here in just a minute. You're going to show us, you have two rooms. Is that correct? I do. I do. Okay. Will you do me a favor? Because so many questions have already come up. Okay. And sure. I just want to, as we go through this, uh, I'm going to read some of them off just right sure. now that yep. maybe as you're going through it, you could keep like them in mind and answer them as we go through it. So I just yep. want to, I want to bring some of them to the front right now. Um, here's one by Josh that says your most prized item. What is one piece that you will never let go? I don't think you would let any of them go for one. <laughs> um, Oh gosh, yeah. Do you yeah. own Super Bowl rings? I know for a fact that you do. I do. Um, first piece, uh, favorite piece, and why? And and a most sentimental piece. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any pieces that you're still looking for? Have you ever bought a signed piece and found out that it was forged? I have. <laughs> I think many people have, especially in the Brett Favre collection. Yep. Nothing to be ashamed of. Nope. You know, that's nope. a good learning experience. Yep. Yeah. Um, what is your holy, your holy grail, uh, grail piece? You know, what is, what is that yeah. number one piece for you? Yeah. Um, favorite moment as a Packer fan, if you have one of those. Now, that might be outside the memorabilia realm. Yeah. Something that uh, maybe, out. yeah, maybe. Okay. Um, what is your absolute? Uh, well, this goes with all the other ones, but what is your absolute favorite piece of memorabilia that you own and means the most to you? We, we've we've kind of hit that. How many years have you been collecting? I think that's kind of been answered. What was the hardest piece in your collection to get a hold of? Ah, hardest. Okay. Hmm. Uh. What is one piece that you dream of but still don't have? Okay. <laughs> and then what inspired you to start your collection? And I know, I know, and I'm watching the comments as this go through, and I'll kind of throw out some other things to you as well. Sure. But uh, if you want to just take it from here, okay. I myself am in awe. I'd love to sit back and let you talk, <laughs> and I'll follow along just like everybody else. Okay, well, what I guess I'll do um, first is I'm going to take my iPad off of the um, off the tripod so I can walk around. I'm just going to do a 360 in this room and then a 360 in the other room. And then I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to go to specific uh, items and talk a little bit about each um, each thing that will answer a lot of those questions. Perfect. And uh, I'm going to try to do a slow 360 because... Um, I don't want to get pixelated or anything, but uh, okay. anyway, uh, bear with me just a second while I do this. As you're doing that, I have um, some of your friends like Chad Orbit just jumped in that okay. I know he would love for me to say hello for him to you. He's a great hello, Chad. And, uh, you know, there's other people in here as well that absolutely like um, Steve Tate, you know, Steve Tate, the owner. Sure. He's he's not with us tonight, but he wanted me to let you know he'll be watching this later on, and he sends his love as well. Uh, love Steve. He's been here. He's been here before. So uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna switch the camera and uh, see if did it switch. Yep. You know, and and as you're doing that as well, maybe think about in in regards to. I know that you have tons of pennants, you have tons I, of banners. Maybe you have a favorite pennant you want to show out, or maybe a favorite banner or a broad sign or something like that as well. Okay, all right. What I've got here, uh, what I'm showing you now is um, one of the walls in the large room, and you can see I've got um, you know some large. Uh, uh, banners that were all around Green Bay and around uh, uh, what was called City Stadium back there uh, in 57. Um, you know, in 60, 65, 61, 
banners. Um, we've got uh, one of the things I really like collecting are our pennants. And I've got probably the most, one of the most complete collections of vintage Packer uh, pennants. And I think you'll see a lot of them are just crazy old. These happen to be my favorites right here. And you act, uh, you ask, you know, what some of the harder things were for me to, to get for the collection. And that would be these pennants that I'm showing you right here. The old blue and gold uh, pennants just, I think they get us all going because they're so ultra rare and so ultra uh, cool. Uh, I love the, the blue and gold era. Um, as I go up the wall, you're going to see a lot of great ones. This is a great pennant from 1941. Um, and, you know, we, we go up and it's just uh, pretty much one, one pennant after another. I, I hope love, you guys can, can I love the ones them. with the team. The team. Oh, the, the, the photos. Yeah. Those are awesome. Yep. Those are great. Um, somewhat, somewhat hard to get. There's an old broadside from uh, the second year of the Packers. Um, their uh, kickoff game for the second year of, um, of City Stadium is what I meant to say, not of the Packers, but City Stadium. So that's a pretty cool old, um, old um, broadside. In, uh, this is a kind of a cool thing. Uh, this is a uh, Paul Horning's 1961 NFL Player of the Year trophy. Oh my goodness. Right there. And that that's pretty cool. Um, down below is actually uh, Curly Lambeau's trunk from um, the uh, 30s and 40s uh, when they were trying to get the team off the ground and um, financially stable, I guess, more than anything. That's a player's uh, trunk on, on the bottom there. Um, I'm moving over here. Of course, we've got all sorts of pennants up on the on the ceiling. I've got uh, just a ridiculous amount of bobbleheads. I think anybody looking at that would think there's clearly something wrong with this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I will agree, um, and my wife would agree. Uh, now, I just got into collecting those. Now, Glenn, go back to those bobbleheads just for a minute. I'd like to point out something here as well yeah. is even right there in front of you, that Danbury Mint, 1966, 67, somewhere around there. Yes. And the Curly Lambeau uh, statue right next to it and the Vince Lombardi statue. Now, yeah. some of those are a little bit more common, maybe not the Danbury Mint one, uh, yes. That's that's kind of hard to get and keep it in great keepsake because those break very easily. They do. But you have, yes, stuff that is vintage, but you have some up-to-date stuff as well. I've tried to mix in a few up-to-date items. And honestly, I've had, I used to have a lot more um, current items. And as my collection grew, I had to take it out and replace it with more vintage things that that were more valuable or, or more meaningful to me so uh here's some hats from super bowl one and super bowl two um which are pretty cool and you know of course uh, a lot of people well, there's some kissing nodders but uh, a lot of people collect glassware and you know i i'm not real big into it but i but i um i i get into the old designs and so forth there's now, my I'm old um electric football set from when I was a kid that I talked about earlier. And Now, if people follow you on your Facebook page, if you go back to that shelf that you were just at, uh -huh. I saw some decals sitting on there. And yep. recently you kind of advertised on those. Uh, could you share just a little bit what you shared on your Facebook group? I tell you, I've been following you, man. And I'm, uh, I'm in, in amazement just in those decals there. Are you, you saying you're stalking me? Is that, exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> I know you were stalking Doug. Now, now I get added to the list. So. <laughs> um, yeah, these packages of decals here, um, I had um, I talked about on my website, and it kind of a cool story. My dad worked for the company that uh, he was a design artist. He worked for the company that 
uh, designed the first Packer G and uh, for the helmets. And uh, for the longest time when I was a kid, I thought the G stood for Glenn. You know, I was just a little <laughs> kid back then. And so uh, my dad had these packages of, um, you know, just in brown paper, like, well, where, where is it? Just like this. And um, in a cabinet in the basement. And, you know, he, when he went to work one day, I, I went down there and I was like, well, I've got to figure out what's in there. And I opened them up and they're just full of Glenn decals. And, uh, <laughs> and so I stuck them everywhere. I mean, I had them on metal cabinets. I had a, you know, a rock polisher when I was a kid. I put them on the drum of that so I could watch them go around. I think I had an MDA carnival and I gave them out as prizes um, while my dad was at work. And uh, so little did I know that those things would be priceless someday. And uh, those were the actual first Packer G's for the helmets. Incredible. And I was using the darn things. So yeah. Uh, just, just amazing. Just amazing. And right, I, up, right up above that, I have to yeah. shout out as well. You have a wine bottle sitting in the back right there. Did Mr. Yeah. Chad Orvik kind of help you out with that? That's for Mr. Chad right there. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you again, Chad. He is a, he is a gem when it comes to that. He is. Anything, anything with Jerry Kramer, you, you will, uh, it's going to be connected to uh, Chad. Yep. So. Yeah. All right, and I'm sorry for keep no. interrupting. I'm in, no. I'm in awe, man. Please, please, any, anything. Um, I think you'll notice I have a sign up here that says Christensen uh, Groceries. My grandparents had a grocery store just a few blocks uh, away from Lambeau, so that's where I grew up, just um, hanging out there. And, you know, I'd even sit on the curb in the fall and listen to the game. I could hear the crowd cheering in the, you know, I, uh, you know, I always knew if the Packers were doing great because uh, you, you'd hear cheering nonstop. And, uh, and of course, it was, you know, the 60s and Packers are great. So um, my, uh, my biggest dream was having, um, wanting Bart Starr to turn into the, because uh, in, they had gas pumps. I, I thought if I sit here long enough, he's going to stop in, get some gas and throw me a few passes and what never happened. But, Wow. Um, here's an old blanket from the 30s that my wife just got me not too long ago. Mm. Just amazing. Over here is cool. Uh, you know, I, I love this uh, probably more than, well, I always say stuff like that and I don't mean it. Uh, I, I love these. I love these coats, uh, but I, I don't have any really favorite Packer stuff. You know, it's all, it, it all weighs the same in my mind. Um, in the background there, you see an old, um, uh, trench coat type. That's probably one of the oldest Packer coats, um, you know, that I have. There's only a couple of them in existence. And, um, I was so lucky to get that from a former player, um, uh, family of a former player. This is an old, uh, thirties and forties, uh, uh, you know, the blue and gold, uh, sweaters and um uh of course then you have you know the lombardi era sideline coats and that's actually dad brochure's uh coat right there the with the uh old logo on it that says world champions wow and then uh lombardi always wanted his assistant coaches to look sharp so that's one of the assistants um um well, i'm gonna call it a sport coat i guess and then just some vintage, uh, vintage uh, Letterman coats. Um, over here, we've got, you know, all the championship um, uh, programs from over the years, all the way down to Super Bowl 45. Um, might be hard to see down there because it's a little dark, but got those all there. And of course, this monstrosity, is my Bart Starr statue. I uh, managed to find one of those when uh, Just for Feet was going out of business, and uh, I went and got that in Oklahoma. So uh, that was a that was a great find. Uh, this wall here is uh, cabinets that I built uh, to house footballs and trophies and jewelry and you name it. Uh, this is a great sign that I. Uh, 
that I got that's from the 60s and 70s uh, that helped. You'll see this in pack, old Packer yearbooks and Packer books. That was the uh, that was over the Packer practice field. And good God, I mean, when I found that, um, my good friend Mike at Card and Coin actually found that for me. Oh, and uh, uh, he is a gem for sure. So, um, okay. So then back here. Uh, so these are the lockers that I built originally for the room. And what I did, I don't have the picture anymore. Anyway, I found a picture of what the old locker room looked like. So I got expanded metal and I got, uh, you know, I built these lockers um, from scratch. I made the nameplates um, for them. I own a printing company, mainly because of my guilt of using all the Packer Gs. Um, that's, that's how I got into stickers, so. Uh, <clears throat> But I originally had all my childhood, you know, heroes in here. I had Bart Starr and uh, Ray Nitschke, Paul Horning, uh, Jim Taylor, uh, Jerry Kramer. And so now I've got it in two rooms, so I kind of split them up. But uh, we've got signed helmets in all of them. Um, I'll come back to here. This is uh, kind of cool. Everybody always likes to see this. Jerry Kramer's. Um, player's contract and uh, what's cool about this is let's see if I can get it here get it on here you can see it's uh, signed by Pete Roselle which is a tough signature to find mm. and it's signed by um, Vince Lombardi and uh, and Jerry Kramer as well so I love these old contracts it's it's just amazing what these guys played for uh, compared to today. And I've got, uh, this is uh, Ray Nitschke's player's contract. 1968, he was making $33,000 a year. Oh my goodness. So uh, I love these, it's a Pro Bowl helmet. Uh, this actual helmet and I, I'm gonna come in close. You can see the Packer G underneath the NFL shield. So um, Donnie's been to my house a few times and um, Donnie Anderson, this is his helmet. Uh, and he explained to me that uh, they basically left immediately um, after the Super Bowl or championship, I guess, and flew uh, with their equipment uh, to the Pro Bowl. And so they got there and they, took their helmet and, and spray painted a gold and, and put the, the uh, NFL shield right over it. So wow. uh, those are pretty cool. I've got his and I've got Carol Dale's. This is Carol Dale's um, Pro Bowl helmet right here. So those are pretty rare to find. All right. Glenn, I got to jump in real quick yeah, and say – that those lockers and your display cases and everything, it's amazing how you've displayed those. Amazing. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I, you know, I built it myself. Uh, my dad was really great with wood and he, he taught me a lot of, of woodworking skills and, and uh, I didn't think I, I really could figure out how to do all this stuff, but I somehow got through it and, um, but I appreciate you saying that. I think I'm going to save, save the footballs and, and the other stuff to last, Jim. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm going to go into the other room. And so what I did in here is I built the uh, New Day uh, locker room. I found some obvious pictures, you know, of the, of the current locker room, and I built these. Actually, uh, I had a one-week window, a uh, 10-day window. I sent my wife to um, to Paris. This was my son's room. He went to college. So I had basically a week to clear it out and uh, and build these lockers and, and move in here before uh, she got back. And yes, I was in some deep doo-doo when she got back. She still <laughs> talks about it. But um, uh, she loves how it turned out. And she just was upset she didn't get a chance to say goodbye to all my son's things but uh anyway we got over that 
but um, in here we have, you know, uh, the sideline bags, the equipment bags. Uh, this is just incredible. Uh, Fred Thurston uh, set me up with this. This is Fuzzy Thurston's uh, blanket from 1959. Wow. Just an incredible piece. This is a sideline bench from uh, the 60s and 70s. Uh, lots of helmets. I don't have places to go with all the helmets I have, to be honest with you. <laughs> but on this wall, I've got just great items. I've got uh, programs going back to 1926 and 27, 28. Um, I've got... Uh, you know, that's a Curly Lambo contract copy. Um, that's a really cool item there that I found. Uh, that was a feasibility study showing um, when uh, the Packers were considering making it a year-round venue to try to get some more money in the door. And they were going to put the uh, cover on it like uh, Minnesota. And thank God they never did that. Yes. Um, and we got, uh, let's see, I've got, uh, stock Packers, certificates, Packers stock from the fifties. And of course I'm a stockholder from the last two share, uh, share sales. And, uh, there's another 1950s there. I got some old broadsides, um, from the sixties, the schedules. Uh, I just love those. They just take up so much room. I've got I've got lots, uh, quite a few more, but I just can't um, can't display them all. This is a great piece um, right here. This is a um, envelope, and you can see right right in the middle it says Curly Lambo right there. Right but there. The, the whole team, uh, 1937 team, signed the back of this envelope, and in a train station they were playing in Washington D.C. and um, this guy was a stamp collector, so uh, he was mailing himself this envelope back to have a, a he did that whenever he traveled. He, he'd have, uh, he'd get an a envelope with a stamp on it and it would be stamped with the city. Well, he runs into the Packers and um, has them sign it all. He actually mailed it to himself with all those incredible signatures on there. And um, anyway, the family found it when they were going through his things and and luckily got a hold of me and uh, he's got a great home here. Wow. This is a great letter here. Uh, this, uh, this letter here is from uh, uh, Calhoun, G.H. Um, Calhoun, who was, uh, you know, in charge of the uh, ticket sales for the Packers. And this is 1929. This is September 11th. This is, this is their, uh, one of their championship years. And, um, you know, he's talking to people about, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the board that, hey, we've got a couple of weeks left. We've got to get the rest of these tickets sold. And, um, and apparently that happened because the backers are still here. But um, what had happened, um, there we go, what had happened just a few weeks later than the meeting was uh, the Great Depression hit. And uh, so in my mind, if they hadn't sold those tickets prior to the depression hitting, I don't think the Packers would be around anymore. So uh, that's a pretty an, amazing thing when you think about it. There's an old uh, uh, ticket reservation form uh, from, from that year, 1929. Um, and that's just that, again, like you said, I've mixed in a few modern pieces. That's, that's a piece that was available from Jostin's, uh, after we won Super Bowl 45, it has the tops of all of the um, all the Super Bowl rings in it, which I thought was just crazy great, and uh, so I had to get that. And I'm, everybody's seen this. My kids got me this, and uh, you know what? Uh, it, it's not old, and it's one of my favorite pieces, um, just because those guy three guys I love. I, I love all three of them so. What a joy it's been in my lifetime to watch all three of them. Yes. Um, this is um, an ice bowl bench. This is one of only three that are in existence. This was carried out by a gentleman 
of the ice bowl. And, and um, when he saw me on a Green Bay station one time, uh, he called the station and said, I want to give this guy something. And he, uh, he actually gave me this bench. And uh, I was obviously floored by it. That's a sideline marker from the ice bowl. Um, here is a picture of the ice bowl right here. And you can see the, uh, but yeah, that, can, that helmet right there in that picture. Yeah. Is that one of the same helmets that you own? That is um, up here. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Yeah. That's actually one of the uh, sideline helmets right there. Yeah. So we've got a bunting from the ice bowl that's signed by Park. And um, this is all the things that my mom gave me. This is uh, the sideline passes from from uh, different games. She'd go on the train and uh, all over the place the Packers went. There was a great patch by our friend Bill Zawitsky. And that's, this is my mom. Let's see if I can get my finger. My mom is right there in the all red dress. Uh. And um, so... And that's that's her right there. Now you so, just mentioned Bill as well. He's in our group, but yeah. tell me if I'm wrong. But Bill has he's you mentioned one of three of those ice bowl benches. Bill's uh, one of those people that has one. Is that correct? No. Well, it, this is actually the type of bench that Bill and I have together. Um, this is actually from Milwaukee County Stadium. Oh, okay. So okay. yeah, yeah. But the one he has is a gem as well. You know, the, these these wood these wood benches are just amazing. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll back out here just a little bit, but you'll notice the floor is turf, and um, it's a little hard to make out because I've got stuff sitting on it. But uh, this side right here is the side of the peak, and then if you go. If you follow the camera, that would be the outside of the peak. So what I got here, and you can see the beginning of the A. Uh, when I went to Super Bowl 45 here in Dallas, um, I was there. I was at the stadium the Wednesday before, a couple days before, and I noticed they were putting the, uh, the turf down. And I was like, well, son of a gun, they're putting in different turf than – they had I, I just assumed they painted it or something you know but no they were putting in new turf and I said well I'm gonna find out who <laughs> what they're doing with that after and uh, so the minute the game was over uh, the next day I was on the phone with the NFL trying to find you know what are you doing with that and so apparently somebody had thought about it a little before I did and they bought it and they were chopping up into one inch by one inch squares for little plaques and that they were selling for a hundred dollars each. So I called the guy and I said, well, I need a 10 foot by 10 foot piece. And he was, when he recovered from that statement, then we came to an agreement of what, what this would cost. And um, luckily they had it right in a uh, warehouse in Fort Worth, not too far from my office. And uh, so I went over there and got it and, um, the thing weighs about 300 pounds. It still has all the black uh, pellets in it from, uh, you know, that they put in it. Right. But it's actually the P that, uh, that is on this right here. He's kneeling on the P with the winning touchdown. And I was in that end zone with my son in, uh, in Dallas. And uh, that's when I looked down and I said, I'm going to get that piece of turf. And I did. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh let's see here we've got those drums are incredible that's a, a cool piece yes and um uh, got some barb jerseys a couple of those are used from the from the pro bowls mm -hmm. um let's see back over here i've just got some you know, players that were meaningful to, to me over the years and um, just great, great things to have. Super Bowl uh, 31 signed helmet. And, you know, in these lockers, I've got, um, you know, you can see I've got my 
the big three here, Bart Starr, Brett Favre, and, and Aaron Rodgers. I've got, of course, uh, you know, game use shoes. Oop, put my finger over it. Game use shoes, cleats from Rodgers and, uh, and Favre. Um, kind of cool. This is one of the game used balls from the Super Bowl. Uh, those are pretty hard to find. Um, this one is a has the NFL sticker on it and oh, fumble. Fumble. Uh, there we go. Yeah, this so this is a Packers ball. Occasionally you'll see them, but they're gonna be a Steelers ball. And uh, the Packers ones are the hard ones to get. So I was thrilled to find that. Uh, Reggie White, um, that's a signed helmet that he had. The helmet is so heavy, it's just crazy. Um, his game use shoes and um, Jim Taylor got those are his. Oh, I keep doing that. Uh, those are his cleats. I'm hoping you can see number 31 on the back of those cleats they still have mud in them wow and uh that makes it so cool and so meaningful and uh then i got donnie anderson here um another game helmet of his and um so these you know they're all they're all my heroes of course you know where do you stop i mean there's just so many great packers and you know you just um I'm out of room. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. I'm out of room and, and you can only show so many. Um, these, this is old. Um, this is the original uh, Lambeau field um, bleachers from um, before they put the wonderful metal bleachers and you can see the numbers are stamped in it. Mm. And uh, so I was lucky enough to get an eight foot section of that. I don't know if you are familiar with that story of where they came from. I, I was not, no. Okay, no. well, um, so a gentleman, a builder in Green Bay was selling those on, online, like just one, one number. And I got a hold of them. I went up there and I said, I've got to have a, a full bench. And we came to an agreement and um, turns out that he was doing a building project of a, on a A-frame that was owned by one of the board members in the Packer in the 60s, okay, board member of the 60s. And the, all, all the A-frame was made out of these timbers. Uh, they took them out of Lambeau Field, and instead of throwing them away, he built a house out of them. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so this guy was smart enough to take them all home and, and, and sell them. So. Okay, so that's it for, for that room. Do you want to take a break to uh, do some of your festivities, or do you want me to hey, keep going? I would love for you to keep going. I, <laughs> I'm like everybody else, and I'm reading through the, the comments here, and everybody is honestly just in awe, Glenn. Seriously. <laughs> well, it, it's amazing. If you don't, this is if a you piece don't, of history. This is one of my favorite pieces right here. Uh, uh, I'm doing a little commercial for you, Jim. Oh, I appreciate that. You, <laughs> I have to, I've got to wet my whistle here while I'm talking. So. <laughs> no problem. It's just, it's amazing. When I sit there and I look at all this, I think of the history. I think of the tradition. I think of, um, you know, the Packers. And I've, I've got to meet uh, Jim Taylor and these guys, you know, the ones that recently have passed away in it. It's sad, but man, you have it right there with you all the time that you could go into your rooms and you could relive history. And it's amazing. Well, you know, it is, I'm, I'm clearly, clearly very, very lucky to. to You're blessed. Where are you? Hold on. I'm, I lost you. Um, uh -oh. I think you might have turned off your video on the zoom there you I go i got it <laughs> sorry about that no you're that fine been bad. um you know i just have such a a weird family history with the packers because with my mom being involved and then you know i um my mom 
was uh, very close with uh, Don Hudson over the years. And, you know, every Christmas we'd get a Christmas card and my mom, oh, we got a Christmas card from Don and I, I can't remember her, her, uh, his wife's name. But I was like, well, great. I don't know who that is. You know, I, I had no clue when I was a little kid. And, you know, so I put it to get all together when, when I uh, got a little older and I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Um, one item, and, and you had mentioned a couple questions. What was the hardest thing for me to get? And what was the, what, what's the most meaningful thing? This uh, football right here is actually really one of the most meaningful things that I have. You can see it says Don Hudson, April 20th, 1950. Well, Don came to uh, my mom's uh, hospital and gave that to her the day my brother was born. That's his birthday, April 20th. And so that, that football, along with a signed team ball uh, from the 60s, sat on my dresser because my brother and I shared a bedroom. And so he, he had no, absolutely no desire uh, to follow the Packers. He, he, he just had no love for football at all. So I just stared at these things. I mean, I, I just, I mean, that was everything to me. And um, so anyway, as we got older, you know, sometimes you, you drift apart. My brother and I were not, were not that all that close, uh, especially because we're 10 years apart and it just didn't, didn't happen. But um, I asked him if I could buy that football from him. Well, he actually sold it to somebody else. Uh. And so I looked and looked and looked, and I'd been interviewed by, you know, lots of newspapers and magazines and TV. And I'd always mention, you know, they always say, well, what's the one thing you're looking for? And well, that was it. And so um, uh, a collector friend and, and dealer friend, uh, Chris Neret, who I think is, might be a member of your group as well. Um, he actually was sent the pictures of this ball, um, uh, to his office and he, he knew I was looking for it. And he said, Glenn, I think I found your, your brother's football. And sure enough, it was, and I, I'll be honest, I cried. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'd been looking for this ball for 20 years and, uh, Chris found it for me and, and, uh, gave it to me. And, uh, so that thing, uh. That thing is very meaningful to me. So, yeah. Uh, so it's probably the most sentimental piece, and you just turned off your camera again, just so you know. But it's yeah, probably the most sentimental piece that you have, you would say. Uh-oh. There he goes. There you are. Sorry about that. No, no, you're okay. All right. What's my most sentimental piece? Would it be that football? That would be probably uh, the most sentimental, but um, you know, I've definitely got cooler, cooler items. There's, there's no question about that. Um, you know, I, I'm going to go to my case here and um, you know, these right here are, I hope you can see this. Sometimes the lighting is, is crazy, but these are all game balls that, you know, these, like these are from fuzzy thirst and these are game balls that are presented to them signed by Lombardi and, you know the other team members and they used to be painted great they they had seen better days they've been in his bar uh and uh and so they're a little smoky and so forth but i just love that they were his yeah. this ball yeah. here i love it is uh reggie white's game ball that he was presented at the super bowl uh for breaking the nfl sack record um i mean you just uh, reggie was one of my all-time favorites you know I don't think anybody changed the game as much as he did. And I honestly don't think, I don't think this is a big surprise, but I don't think Green Bay would have had the Super Bowl they had without him. And uh, I, anyway, I, I just love that I have that. This is uh, a Favre, Favre ball when he uh, broke Bart Starr's record of consecutive starts. Um, so that, that's kind of a cool ball. But I've got, uh, you know, of course, you know, just lots and lots of, of team sign balls, um, you know, from the 60s. And, you know, I, I, 
it's kind of hard to see in here, but on my on my Facebook page, I've got all of these really well documented. But I have a pretty good collection of all vintage pins and pinbacks that a lot of them are just ridiculously hard to find. This is probably get this here. These are probably the the hardest ones to get right here. That's a 1920 um, 1929 Packers. Wow. Those are pocket mirrors, and they were made by Stiller, the photographer, and uh, they're just so ultra rare to have. And the you know they probably probably should be you know well, I was going to say a museum, but I guess it is a museum. But um, yeah, they're in a museum. I'll take the, that in the Packer Hall of Fame. You know, uh, <laughs> but you know this is a great piece that I found. This is a candy box. If anybody grew up in Green Bay, you knew um, Cops Candies. And uh, so this is a 1929 uh, candy box with one of the Stiller champ, World Champ uh, photos laminated to it. And so uh, this, and it says, with congratulations, Otto Cop on the back. And uh, so he gave these to the players in 1929 as a congratulations for winning the world championship. So that's a pretty cool thing. This is uh, Vince Lombardi's uh, mass card when he died. Kind of a neat little item. Looks like you got some pieces of goalposts right there. Who doesn't? Um, yeah. <laughs> there is actually three and a half miles of goalposts. Uh, <laughs> apparently because uh, uh they they sure sold a lot of it but uh who knows i i, I hope it is but uh yeah i got all sorts of great stuff uh, it's almost too hard to uh you know to get into it i think i have these on the on the website that's reggie white's um players association card uh nfl players association card and this is his NFL um, uh, card showing that he's a, a member of the NFL. So those are pretty cool items. That's awesome. Glenn, what would you consider your rarest piece that you have? Well, uh, that's an easy one. Um, I'm going to go to the center. I'm going to go to the center um, cabinet. And, you know, I've got, you know, fun things in here. I've got, you know, of course, Vince Lombardi gave jewelry to his players and friends and so forth. And so I've got a lot of cufflinks and tie pins and so forth. I've got um, some great rings. These are, you know, 65 championship. That's a prototype ring of uh, Super Bowl one. This is... Um, one of the few that has an emerald in it. And um, here's a tie pin that goes with it, with an emerald. Mm. And uh, since you have a no swearing policy, <laughs> I can't tell you what Lombardi said about the emerald, but uh, he told him to get it. Anyway, get it out of there. My boys deserve diamonds. So that's how we ended up with this ring. And that's a, that's an actual, Super Bowl ring right there with awesome. real diamonds and all that. This is a who's, Super Bowl two ring right here. Who's whose were they? Could you, well, you to say? Uh, I yeah, I don't yeah, I better not. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, but I've got um, uh, trying to get this camera lined up. You know, again, great jewelry, gold money holders. You know and. Uh, this is a great piece that matches the matches the ring, uh, 1960. This was actually presented to uh, I'll pan over here. Actually presented to Tony Canadeo. Um, he was a coach uh, for the Packers back then, as well. Um, love this. This is Reggie White's uh, 74 fifth anniversary the nfl 75th anniversary all nfl team pin and um it's got a diamond in it let me try to get it it's got a diamond and it just 
perfect. Oh, you it's could a beautiful, see it. right beautiful between, piece. Right between the, the numbers, right? Yep, yeah. And then, uh, of course, there's shareholder rings from Super Bowl 31 and Super Bowl 45. And so, okay, so the rarest thing. Um, got a couple things. This is... Um, City of Green Bay was so excited to have a winning team in 1961 that uh, 1960, they had a winning record, is what I meant to say, um, that the Chamber of Commerce gave Vince Lombardi this trophy. Wow. And I absolutely love having a trophy that Lombardi was given. Yeah. Um, that is amazing. And, of course, the following year, they'd, they'd win the, uh, the world championship. Um, over here, I've got... Bart Starr's 1966 playbook. And this thing just puts chills up my spine because the whole thing is written in inside in his hand, in his pen. And, you know, the B's are exactly the way he signs his name. And wow. I mean, it's just incredible to look through this. And, uh, you know, you see the Packers sweep in it and you have, it, it's just amazing that, that that made it through time. Um, this is probably my favorite item if I was to give a favorite item. This is an actual um, ice bowl football right here. This was, um, this was lettered a couple days after the, um, the ice bowl, and uh, I got it from the uh, equipment manager's family, and along with another football. And that's one of two that are that I know of. The other one is in the Packer Hall of Fame. And uh, to have that is just beyond anything. I never thought I'd, I'd have that. I used to go to the Packer Hall of Fame and I'd stare at that football and I'm like, well, of course, nobody's going to get a game used football from the ice ball. And, and, and I do. And uh, that's so that's definitely one of the pieces I'm most proud of. And, um, and I absolutely love it. Um, from the same source, this is from the 1965 NFL championship game, uh, the Mud Bowl, and that was Jim Taylor's or Jim um, Brown's last game with the Browns. So that's a pretty meaningful football there as well. And um, so those two, you know, all all four of these items, I just really, I I, I just love. I love having those, those game used championship footballs i never thought i'd have those yeah that's amazing you have them all four right there so that that's the favorite shelf i think it is it's kind of odd i didn't plan that but now now that i'm looking at it and talking apparently that's why i have those there and and along with those ticket stubs i mean that's a that's a ultra rare full ticket stub from the ice bowl uh i don't know why somebody didn't want to go to that nice warm game that day but uh, they didn't use their ticket. And this is a uh, full ticket from the um, 67, well, I guess 66 season. But that was the game that the Packers beat the uh, Cowboys here in Dallas at the um, Cotton Bowl. So um, both very rare tickets to have. Uh, okay, so this cabinet here great stuff i've got uh these are all these particular ones are game used footballs um you can see that they're they're numbered let me try to move it you see they're numbered and what they did is um uh i think they had six balls per per game there's six or i think it was six but um when they used the football they'd bring it in um and the equipment people would number them and uh, for inventory purposes, and they'd put them in the practice room because they couldn't reuse the balls for uh, another game. So from there, uh, then they used them for quarterbacks for a month, and then they went to some, some other group for a month, and then it was the kickers that got them last and <laughs> after they wore, were, were off uh, enough. But um, they're very, very rare to find. Very, very rare to find these with the numbers on them. 
if you look closely, you know, on these pictures of Vince and, and Bart, you know, uh, posing for pictures, Vince is wearing that satin jacket and you'll, you'll notice the footballs have the numbers on them. And uh, so it's pretty cool. So I've got, you know, I've got umpteen signed footballs here. Um, lots of, lots of Packers from the sixties. I definitely got into doing, uh, collecting 1960s footballs for obvious reasons. These are all hand signed balls. Um, I've got one uh, that's a night football from the 1950s signed by Bobby Lane and uh, the other members of that team. But the rest of these are all Vince Lombardi and, and team signed balls. Um, up here, I've got – these are – can hardly make out that this is a football, but – this is a great football. Um, the uh, I don't know if you can see that, but that says Curly Lambo right there. Wow! So this is 1937. That's uh, actually 1936 football. That's the year that they won the uh, championship. And this is another football um, when they they won the championship, and then they played the college all stars that year. This football was actually spray painted gold, and then they signed it. And of course, the gold paint turned a dark color, so it's very, very hard to make out. But uh, <laughs> the history is still there, and it's it's pretty cool to to have. Um, I can make out signatures, but you know, it, it takes a little bit of work to uh, to work through it. But uh, yeah, in total, I've got about twenty one signed footballs from uh, from the sixties, and it's. Uh, it's a little bit mind boggling. I got more up there. And uh, of course, you know, and again, you talked about um, some of the, the newer stuff and, you know, just, just like everybody else, uh, you know, shoot, we had a really great run of them putting us on Wheaties boxes, but then you get to this one from 1964 and that one is as rare as get as it gets right there. That's when Bart Starr was in the back and they gave out these, uh, you could, you get these, um, stamps to put in a book and that one is is so rare to to find i i would look for that one forever actually i think i have the book yeah this is a stamp book that uh that uh the stamps go in so yeah so yeah i do you know to answer your question about that jim i uh you know my, again my my collection used to be really you know a little bit more present day, I guess, is what I'd call it. And and as I keep running out of uh, out of room, I have packed it up. I've got uh, stuff in storage uh, at my office that is just crazy. I mean, uh, the amount that I have in storage is just crazy. But it's stuff I've had to move out of here, and I keep it safe. So incredible, Glenn. Do you have a piece, I kind of mentioned in one of the questions out, out there, that you have on your mind that you want to go after? Is there a dream piece out there uh, that you don't have that you are eyeballing at this moment trying to get a hold of? <laughs> there always is, you know. Um, a good question. You know, uh, years ago, I, you know, I've kicked myself in the butt ever since that I didn't buy, um, you know, Vince Lombardi's sideline coat, the, the trench coat was for sale uh, or at auction years ago. And, you know, I mean, honestly, I just wasn't in the financial situation I am today to, to even think about it. It sold for $11,000, which was yeah. just a ridiculous amount of money in the year that it sold. But um, the, uh, anyway, Currently, it's on sale for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Holy moly! So yeah, uh, so you know, I kick 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 myself in the butt for not for not being able to to do that. Uh, you know, I saw a pair of Bart Starr cleats at one time that were for sale, and I I didn't do that. And so you know, if I was to say you know anything that I'm after, it would be anything. Um, game used you know from the 60s that's that's really where my 
emphasis is right now in my collection is is going game used on on um on all that i'm not really into the current day players I, i'm i'm just not and you know i i you know trust me i'm a season ticket holder i i go up for six or eight games a year fly up there but um you know i uh i just number one you know, I have so much respect for the 60s players and before, if for nothing else, I can read their signature. You know, <laughs> I, I, I just refuse to pay $400 for a signature of somebody that I can't read. And, you know, and I, I say that, and of course, you walk over here and I mean, unless, unless I told you that says Aaron Rodgers, you, who would know? I mean, you know, but, you know, you go, you go to any of the other players from back back in the 60s and 50s and 40s and you know um, well, they, they all had beautiful signatures dave robinson gorgeous every, every one of them mar yeah. fleming gorgeous yes. uh the list jerry kramer you could read them it's gorgeous and his collectors were all saying the same thing guys come on let's make it legible just don't yeah. uh, scribble something down out there you know take your time we would like to well, read it no like who. this i'm Honestly, Clay I'm Matthews. That that's Clay Matthews, but yeah, that's Clay. Okay, but come on, seriously. Right. Yeah, and, you know, but you get down here to. I mean, I know who that is, and I know who that is, and I know Paul Horning. Paul you know, Horning. you, you yep. can you can make out all these guys. I don't know who's on the back, but oh, Aaron Rodgers and, Aaron Rodgers uh, and Brett Favre. Brett Favre. Yeah. Um, so, you know, anyway, I don't want to sound negative, but that's why I've kind of, I've got a whole closet here full of jerseys and, and stuff that I used to have, you know, uh, in, in my collection. And I, I've taken all down only because I, I just want to, uh, celebrate the, the guys that mean a lot to me. Yeah. I guess that's what it is. And this is how I, this is where I, this is the era I grew up in is, is the sixties. And, and that, that means a lot to me to, to just come up here. I'll sit on the, uh, on the couch or put back my, my recliner. Uh, I'm sure people are wondering, well, you don't see a TV in here, but let me go up here. Let's see. I don't know. Why, I don't know why you would want a TV <laughs> in that room. Well, I didn't. <laughs> and, uh, but I, so what I did, I, I've got a 154 inch projector. And uh, so I, I retrofitted up there in front of my uh, display. So it doesn't take away from my, from my collection, but yet when I want to have everybody over to watch a Packer game, it's, it's right there. So it works out pretty darn good. Yeah. But now, yeah. do you do you go to? I know we met at Brett Favre autograph thing, you know, yeah. a couple years back. Do you go to many autograph signings? Uh, you know, Marv Fleming was just in, you know, Illinois. Uh, I tell people all the time, hey, when you see these guys, Paul Horning, uh, I kick myself that uh, this past year Forrest Gregg was supposed to be in Chicago and he unfortunately passed away before then right so I recommend anybody when you see these old players go to autograph shows get out there and see them now I'll tell you what let me turn my camera on here there I am um I'm sure you're liking looking at all my stuff versus me but um you know I I, I totally agree and you know Chad uh Ovid and I have lots of talks about it that you know every i mean these guys are are disappearing from you know and you know if you have something that you want to get signed you you better do it you better you better take advantage of it you know i've got you know just so much uh signed stuff that i typically i don't need anybody else you know i just but it's you know i you know, I, I wouldn't, to answer your question, no, I, I don't go to signings uh, I all that much. I wanted Brett to sign, uh, well, that was the when they were retiring his number, right? Correct. Yeah, so I, we, I had his game, pro, the game program that he was featured on, and 
Um, I guess I'll go back in. Let's uh, turn this around. Um, yeah, I had him sign the game program um, that, uh, you know, from that weekend. Yeah. And then the induction banquet uh, thing, I had him sign that there. But, uh, you know, uh, that that was well worth it, you know. Uh, pricey, but it was worth it. You know that. Right. This is, this is one item that I, I didn't show. This is... Um, Brett Favre's uh, key to Green Bay, key to the city. Uh, I was there when they presented that to him um, in Green Bay at the convention center. I think it was at Thanksgiving um, and one year. And uh, I was sitting there in the uh, I, I, clear as day. I mean, I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, how would somebody get a hold of that? So, how would somebody ever get a hold of that plaque? And sure enough, it went up for uh, for auction, and I and I was lucky enough to get it. So, um, kind of neat to have that connection to it. To I put know. This back. I know that you probably don't want to hear me say this, but um, I think so many times people miss out on the vintage collection that is out there the pins the glasses the programs and that kind of stuff that's something that i've taken you know a liking to i have a very very small collection the dolls i love the packer yeah. dolls yeah. you know and i think people need to appreciate it and spend more time researching the vintage stuff because it's disappearing once it's gone it's gone excellent point i've talked to other collectors about that jim you know, when I first got into this, I was um, not, I wanted nothing to do with the 40s. I wanted nothing to do with the 30s or the 20s. I was like, I don't know. Yeah, I just don't know enough about those guys. I just, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm into Brett Favre and I'm into, you know, Brooks and I'm into all this, you know. And well, as you mature into collecting, you start figuring out what's really valuable. And, and it isn't the mass produced stuff from China or you know, the, the, the photos that, you know, are a dime a dozen. You hit it on the head, you know, back when I started collecting, I could have found blue and gold, everything, jackets, pennants, you know, everything. They're disappearing. Yeah. They are disappearing. And now the same thing's happening with 60s stuff, you know? And so, you know, guys like me are, have bought a lot of it and so there's a shortage of it you're not gonna you're not gonna find it if you have the ability to do it i i would suggest to any collector out there that they really take a step back and ask is the stuff i have in my collection going to be worth anything you know is it is that mini helmet signed by timmerman going to be worth any money you know yeah. it's not it, it clearly isn't and you know but at the same point if it means something to you, you were there, you shook his hand. He was a great human. Heck, that, that's the best collectible you can have. So, you know, you've got to, but just to collect stuff for the sake, sake of collecting stuff, I don't think is a wise uh, path to follow as far as memorabilia. Well, it's, I think a lot of times people want the, the massive man cave. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. and they want tons of it in there. And you got to stop and ask yourself, okay, that looks good. But is it you want the quantity or do you want the quality behind quality. it? Yeah. You know, I have done a lot of work for Marv Fleming on his website. Marv Fleming has sent me an autographed jacket. That's something I'll never get rid of, you know. Of uh, those course. kind of things that I could pass along to my kids and yeah. have a story behind it yeah. is more important to me than a replica helmet of Clay Matthews. Right. I agree. I agree. Now to each their own, you know, I exactly. look at collections, yeah. you know, even on, on your group, you know, people have been, since I joined, I've been looking at, and it's just so neat to see the pride everybody has in their, in their, and I wouldn't take anything away from it. I just say, Hey, if you're out there and you're in an antique store and you see, like Jim said, you see an old pin back or a, you just like I showed you that um, 
that 1930s blanket. It was sitting in an antique store with a bunch of current day stuff piled on it. Gail sent me a picture. She was up there visiting and she said, do you want any of this stuff? And I said, well, no, none of that. But wait a minute, what, what's under there? And she takes it out and holds it up for the camera. I said, oh my God, you're <laughs> kidding me. So, you know, you've got to keep your eyes open for things. And, but, you know, I, I totally agree with your statement. It's, uh, you know, I, I, I would recommend to any, any memorabilia collector to try to mix it in a little bit. And I think you're going to find yourself mixing it in a little bit more, a little bit more, and you're going to find the history. I've learned so much about the history of the Packers by, by collecting memorabilia. And, you know, it, it, it's made it really fun. It's a, it's a great hobby and it's a, you meet such great people like yourself and, and your group, you know, so. And there's nothing wrong with the people out there. And you kind of briefly hit on it. That does yeah. not have the budget to go out there and put into memorabilia. Exactly. I got to tell you this little, uh, you know, Brett Favre handmade pin right there came from a great friend. Those are the kind of things that I will hold on right. to forever. Right. Oh, without question. You know, I, you know, and I have many things like that. Yeah. And, you know, I just, I can't get rid of them. You know, everything I have current day has to do with my son, you know, taking him to Lambo and, and my son-in-law and my, my girls. And, you know, there's a meaning behind everything. And, and we collected all that stuff together. I'll never get rid of it. I yeah. just don't have room for it in here. Right. Yep. Well, when I met you, I had my young son, Brett, who's autistic. Exactly. Yes. I named him, I named him Brett and I'm taking him to meet Brett Favre. That will live with me forever. Wow. And it will live with my son. Yeah. You know? yeah. So make it, make it. Memories. What a moment. Yeah. 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 That's what it's all about is making memories. Yeah, it really is. Glenn, you were very gracious to send me, you know, quite a few of your magazines here. Yeah. In the next day, I'm going to go through and I'm going to be looking through all these comments. Okay. I'm going to be picking out, you know, some people and I'm going to send these and some of those stickers that you sent to me as well. Sure. And uh, I'm going to send these out to these. I know I've looked through these probably 30, 40 times just since the time that you sent to me. <laughs> you know, even this right here is a piece of history. What you have is history. Yeah, you know, definitely. and we are blessed to have you in our group and uh, sharing oh, your collection. And I'll probably bug you again very soon <laughs> to go live again and spend more time because I don't think you could sit here and go through this collection in an hour's time. I really, I, I really had to hurry through it because I wanted to show all of it, but. Truthfully, you know, I've got great stories about so many items that I didn't really get into because it's uh, uh, time restrictive. But, you know, I, again, that's what I loved about putting this collection together is learning the people behind it and learning, even learning about my family. You know, I, I just, I learned so much about uh, my family. And my dad worked for Don Hudson at his auto, auto dealership. My dad actually looked like Don Hudson. Yeah. And uh, when you bought a car at Don Hudson, um, I don't remember what kind of car he sold. Um, it wasn't an Ed sold. Anyway, um, it was right there. In my, anyway, when you bought a car, you got a signed Hudson football. Well, Don would send my dad out there and have him shake the hand and give him the football because he didn't want to go out there and meet the people. Oh, <laughs> so, you know, just crazy stories like that. Uh, you know, it's priceless. So, um, yeah. I, I like to say one more thing and I'm asking our group members with all please do respect. Okay. This man has been gracious enough to share his collection with us. Please people don't disrespect this opportunity by hitting up Glenn and saying, Glenn, you have something you could sell me? It's not going to happen, guys. It's not going to happen. Don't disrespect Glenn and ask him, how much was this or how much was that or anything like that. We're great. He's been gracious enough to show his collection, appreciate it. Don't ever think you're going to compare to it. Go out there, build your collection according to you and the memories you have. Right. Make That's it good, fun good for advice. you. 
and appreciate what Glenn has been able to share with you because you're looking at the history of the Green Bay Packers. So I'm in awe, Glenn, and I, uh, well, I, appreciate thank, that. You for, I thank you for your friendship. Oh, well, thank Most you important. for reaching out as well. I, you know, I know we met years ago and, um, you know, I feel like I've wasted some years uh, not being close with you because I think we're, uh, we're a lot alike. So I appreciate that. I appreciate You're that. the good looking one and I'm. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, Glenn, I'm, I'm not going to take more of your time. We've went well over the time. I appreciate it. Okay. I will hit you up and buggy again about this, though. I, I'd love to trust me. I, I'm I, I love showing it off, and you know, uh, you know, a lot of people always want to ask if they can come for a tour, and this is this is a little bit more comfortable for me to show it off this way because it's just, uh, you know, it's it's a it's quite a quite a thing to look after it. So right. Uh, anyway. All right, Glenn. Well, I appreciate your time. Thanks for the offer uh, for tonight. I appreciate it so much. Okay. I will talk with you soon. And, and I always end it uh, in a certain kind of way because we do bleed uh, green and gold and we do like to say it loud and say it proud. What do you think that is, Glenn? Go Pack Go! Exactly, my friend. <laughs> I, will, gonna be? <laughs> I will talk with you soon and I'll see you in the group. All right, sir. Have Thank a great you. night. Good night, everybody.